what up beautiful people it's your boy mundus welcome to the shine life family in this video we're going to talk about how to pray for your family how to pray for your loved ones i do get a lot of questions pray for me pray for my family today's video you're going to learn how to exactly pray for your loved ones for your family for your friends for others and get tremendous results this is going to be an important video about prayer and striving in prayer so without further ado, let's get into the word. I use a daily devotional called Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Just click the links in the description. Make sure you're using your phone. You can download that app. It's a free app. And then you can get blessed by beautiful articles every single day. So the theme scripture from today's devotional by Pastor Chris is from the book of Colossians. Chapter 4 verse 12 says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently fervently for you in prayers so the scriptures gives us an example of someone that was praying for others in what kind of prayer he was praying this was not a normal prayer father blessed him father give him there this was different he says epaphras who is one of you a servant of christ laboring fervently fervently for you in prayers let me read the first paragraph and then I got a lot to say, but let's see. Let's look the first paragraph. So Pastor Chris says, the phrase translated laboring fervently, the scripture above is ago, agonizomai. That's the Greek word. It doesn't translate into mere laboring. It means to strive. In fact, the first synonym is to fight. It also means to struggle or contend with an adversary. The same word is what we have in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, which says, fight the good fight of faith. So it's a fight, not a physical fight, but you're wrestling for the souls of your loved one. You're wrestling for their deliverance. You're wrestling because you know why? We all have a will. You know, there are different kinds of prayer. There are different, different levels of prayer. There's a prayer of faith, the prayer of faith where you can decree, decree and declare something. But when it comes to praying for others, the prayer of faith is not the prayer I mean, you can, we can pray any, the prayer of faith anytime, but it is not the prayer of faith because the prayer of faith, you, you, you declare and decree and it is done. But this is different because you have someone's will involved in this. So that's why it's a wrestle with the adversary because their will is involved. And you are, uh, I heard a man of God talked about how you, 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 you're, you're joining forces with God, wrestling for their souls whatever they require for their health for their healing for their salvation that's the most important thing wrestling for souls for their salvation so it's not an easy five minute prayer and it's done no this is an intense prayer and most most likely most importantly speaking in tongues because the human words will be limited what kind of prayer because if, if you are to pray for your family there's so much you can know about what to pray about. But the Spirit knows all things. So when you speak in other tongues, He gives you the right words to act in the realm of the Spirit, fighting for them, wrestling for their souls, battling uh, to clutch them from the depths of darkness. You know, you have a mom that's praying for their kids, a teenager that seems to be going astray. It's a wrestle. You got to wrestle with these forces of darkness. It can't just be like, oh yeah, pray, um, Lord bless him. Bless her when she goes out. This is different. This is different because it's a battle we're dealing with. We're dealing with an enemy. We're dealing with demonic forces of darkness. In the book of uh, Ephesians, it talks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers. Let me show you this actually so we can know who we're contending with. You know, it's a labor, it's a fight um, for the souls of your family, for the souls of your kids. Uh, let me change this. Let me do that, King James. So Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against. It's a wrestling. It's a laboring. It's a fight. Principalities against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this, against spiritual wickedness. We are fighting. We have contended for their souls. You want your loved ones saved? You want to deliver them from the depths of darkness? It cannot be. It's not a simple prayer. You gotta strive. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta, you gotta put in time. This is what Epaphras. Paul gives us an example. He says, "Always laboring." It was not a one-off. It's a continuous battle until you get results. So Pastor says, now Paul by the Spirit tells 
the Christians in the church of Coloss Colossae that Epaphras was always fighting for them in prayers. He was contending with satanic forces in their behalf. That's the part what you, you do in interceding for others. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, this is important. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them, unto them. He is why you must strive in prayer for the souls of men. So I just said, we rest in Ephesians read, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities. Those One of those principalities is one that blinded their minds so that the gospel would not come into their hearts. So like, you are, it's like someone saying, um, imagine this is a wall right here. This is a wall. This is your family or your friends. Um, and this is you. You are speaking all the salvation of Christ. God will deliver you. Jesus is good and nice. All these beautiful things. Your family is here. It doesn't go through. You're saying, man, what can I understand? I'm trying to show them this thing. It's so obvious. Why can they not get it? They're not getting it. There's a wall. It's like I'm showing them scriptures. I'm actually showing my testimony. I'm doing everything. Nothing is going through. There's a wall. Because there's a devil we're dealing with, demonic forces. That's why I said, you need to know who we engage in this battle. He says, we are not dealing with human beings. Don't look at your family. Like, What's wrong with them? Why do they not understand the scriptures? Why did they, why did they not hear? Because uh, another thing too, I know we've been talking about the vaccine. I have to keep on bringing I think I'm going to bring it for every video because it's important. You got people are saying, oh yeah, I told my family about the vaccine and some of my family just went and took it. No, it's not just easy saying, I'm not realizing, not just easy saying, oh yeah, don't take this vaccine. You need to understand there are evil spirits there that's blinded their minds. So what we need to do is pray. Pray that the light of the gospel and truth will come into their heart. Even if you speak and show all the evidence you have about the vaccines, as long as there's this wall, as long as you don't deal with this wall, I'll show you an example. When Jesus, you notice in the ministry of Jesus, when Jesus dealt most of, most if not all, most of the sicknesses are caused by devils. And so when you notice when Jesus dealt with, with, with people that were sick, most, most of the time, he rebuked the spirit. The spirit of someone who's dumb and deaf. He talked to the deaf spirit and commanded it to go. He always spoke to the demonic forces. He dealt with the thing spiritually first. Because he knew there was a spirit that's causing that lameness. There's a devil that's causing that person to be like that. There's an evil spirit. Life is spiritual. Don't always go to, oh, someone is feeling bad and sick. Oh, what did you eat? Oh, it must have been... Oh, it's, it's the weather. No, it's a de deal with the demonic forces. Don't always look at the natural point or someone is, is sick. It must have been some X, Y, Z. No, the enemy is always a devil. You don't have to look for it's the It's the spirits of darkness that are responsible for all these sicknesses, for your loved one. For example, now for the gospel, most of them, you, you might probably talk, warn them about the vaccine. They're not getting it. Yes, now you understand why. There's a spirit. There are spirits that are blocking them from getting this word demonic forces of darkness that have blinded their hearts blinded their minds let's lest you take away so when you pray when we pray like this and this is not a one-off prayer like it's a project it's a project where we got to be patient with our friends with our family that we won't change we are praying we are wrestling because their will is involved we are wrestling in prayer fervent prayer rebuking these evil spirits and when we do that this wall is just coming off. This wall is coming off. And then you notice now, when you have rebuked the devils of darkness, you just have to say a simple thing. Oh, I read it. Oh, there's a beautiful testimony by Pastor Chris. Maybe I should play this. Let me play this video. Oh, I wish I can play this video. Let me play this video now. Let me play this video now. This is perfect. Let me play this video. Okay, let's just watch this video quick. Pastor Chris just explaining praying and fasting and laboring um let me let him explain this better you it, it'll bless you so pay attention you know the member 
because we're having different problems, different challenges, different funny behaviors, not very committed, you know, and things weren't going so well. And I was having a lot of trouble getting everybody to move in the right direction. The leaders weren't behaving right either. So things were just, you know, not going so well. So I was praying and asking the Lord, what should I do? I'm trying, but they just seem to be frustrating. You know, when you're, when you're having to follow up someone that should have been following up other people, <laughs> you see, and then he's even making it difficult for you. And then they're asking you stupid questions, you know. So this kind of situation was there. So I was praying and asking the Lord, what, what shall I do? Then, in my heart, I had this intuition to take some time to fast and pray. Imagine I'm already praying. I'm already praying for them. I'm already asking the Lord, what do I do? And, and then I'm guided by the Spirit to fast and pray for a few days. Then plus that, I should take the next two weeks praying incessantly and doing this early in the morning and late at night. Just for this. So I set myself to do it. I fasted and prayed. Then I began this uh, uh, guidance that the Lord had given me. I would sneak away to pray early in the morning. Then late at night, I would sneak out to pray. And they'll be looking for me. But I would just sneak away. So I was doing this every day for two weeks. By the end of two weeks, as I was praying, I'll never forget. Oh, it was in the night. As I was praying, the power of the Spirit of God was so, so stared in me. From my head down to my feet, I felt the power of God so strong. Then I went to the next meeting. I would merely utter a few words. And just while speaking, just a few words. The power was so strong. And they were just falling under the power everywhere, screaming and talking to the Lord and asking for forgiveness from God. Everywhere. And then they got so scared themselves and they went back and started inviting others who had stopped coming. The Spirit of God was staring them up, staring them up, staring them up. And before long, Everyone was back a fire for God. See? So I learned something. I learned something. What John Wesley said. He said, if the preacher will burn, people will come to see the fire. See? Wow, wow, wow. So um, that was a... Uh amazing <laughs> to say the least you know um we're talking about praying and striving this kind of prayer is like i said like pascal just described it it's, it's not a simple one-off prayer we are wrestling with spirit beings and you have to go in such an intense type of prayer to see this kind of results you know pascal says perhaps your family members loved ones friends colleagues and neighbors you've been witnessing to and they have refused to heed the call of salvation. God's word shows what's the real pro what the real pro problem is. Satan, the God of this world, 
has blinded their minds. For such people, you must contend for their souls in prayer. You agonize in intercession for them. You declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, you evil spirit of darkness that has blinded their minds. I break your influence over them. That's powerful. You're praying like that in the name of Jesus. We should put this to practice. Test this out for the whole week, for the whole month. This is a month of prayer, actually. This is the perfect time for this whole month of prayer. Pray for your family. Pray for them, number one, for their salvation, for your family, for your friends, for your kids. Number two, for truth, that the truth of the word will, will, will rest upon them. They'll be, their hearts will be flooded with light, with God's truth. None will take this vaccine. It's, people think it's just obvious. You might think, oh, yeah, they should understand. I should not take it. No, we know we, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't want your family to take this vaccine. And you have to pray for them. Beyond just telling them, hey, don't do it. We have to pray and wrestle in the realms of the spirit for their souls. That the light and the truth of God's word will come to them. That they can know this is from the devil and not take it. And praying for their salvation, which is the most important thing of all. So, Pastor Chris says, pray like this for your fam for your friends or your family members who are not born again, and you'll be amazed at the result. Praise God. We should put this to practice. This is the whole month of prayer. Let us pray for our family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your kids. Pray for your husband, your wife who is not born again. Pray for them like that. Don't just be saying, hey, I'm going to pray one time. No, make this a project for, for this month of June. Every single day, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling for their souls, speaking in other tongues. Like Pastor Chris said, speaking in other tongues, speaking in other tongues. Pray for them until there's results. This is what we have to do. Until they are grown, there's results. Um, let me, oh, time is up. Let me, Colossians chapter 4, verse two, uh, 12. We just read that. Let me read actually the, the Good News Translation. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, it explains it a little bit further. Da, da, da. So he says, good news, good news translation. For verse 12 says, greetings from Epaphras, another member of your group, a servant of Christ, Jesus. He always prays for you fervently, asking God to make you stand firm as mature and fully convinced Christians in obedience to God's will. So it's important. You might know everything. For example, being fully mature, this is an important prayer to pray for everyone, even for yourself. Imagine if you pray for others, that means it's the same prayer that you're praying for yourself. To be fully mature, fully convinced Christian, in complete obedience to God's will. And I can testify of his hard work for you and for the people in Laodicea and Hierapolis. This is amazing. So this was his project. He prayed for them. He never gave up. He, he kept on wrestling. He just kept on telling us, you can't say, I already told him about Jesus. How come they don't believe? No, no, no. We're dealing with spirits. We have to wrestle and wrestle for their soul. Wrestle until we win that match. We got to win that fight. So this is amazing. Make this your project for this whole month of June prayer session for your family for your friends every single day wrestling for their soul because it's a battle for their souls you know it's a battle for their souls uh you can read the whole bible in a year or two years uh, pick a plan that works for you the plans are right there and this is a perfect moment if you're not born again and you're watching this this is your moment this is your moment you're not watching this by accident for you to receive salvation the days are short the times are moving closer and closer to the coming of the Lord and now is our salvation don't say I'm gonna do it tomorrow I'm gonna do it next week no tomorrow is not promised but you have today you can accept Jesus as your Lord today and receive salvation for your soul it's a simple prayer I want you to say this mean it with all your heart and you'll be born again just say this after me just say this so this is a prayer of salvation just say oh Lord God I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ Son of the living God, I believe, he I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. If you said that prayer, God heard you 
you became born again. You became a child of God. You received eternal life. Now you got to know how to live this kind of life. That's why we make videos here uh, from this daily devotion, Rhapsody of Realities. Make sure you download a copy, actually. Click the link in the description. Use your phone. It's a free app. You can download a copy of this daily devotion I read every single day, and you'll get beautiful articles that will bless you tremendously. So subscribe to this channel. Monday to Friday, there's a new video teaching you the Word of God. So welcome to the family. And for everyone else that's watching, if I want to pray for you. You know, we just talked about striving together in prayer. That's why it's important to join our faith together, praying for each other, praying for one another. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you're going through, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you come out greatly. God gives you a great deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. You come out of that trouble. You come out of that situation victoriously because the Lord has caused everything to work out for your good. You cannot be disadvantaged. The blessings of God are with you. The favor of God is with you. You're coming out of that situation victoriously in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord moves you forward. The Lord moves your head. This is your month of amazing grace, lavish grace. You walk in abundant blessings, an avalanche of testimonies for you and in your life and in your family and in your loved ones. Divine blessings. The devils of darkness are cast out those spirits of darkness. They let go of your money. Let go of your business. You walk in a financial increase like you have never seen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Wow. Amazing, amazing. So making progress. Make sure you go. I have a video um, I did, uh, uploaded yesterday about Pastor Chris about the new uh, the month of June. Go check it in. The, I'm going to leave it probably at the end of this video. Go check it out. Uh, it's a words of prophecy and blessing. You need to receive those words. They'll bless you tremendously. So make sure you li uh, like this video. Put in the comment section, I'm determined, I'm, I'm praying for my family. Put in the comment section, this is my month of prayer. I'll be praying always. I'm praying always. Determine that. Put this as your project. We're going to pray for your family. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for my friends. We're going to strive for them in prayer until Christ is formed in the heart. So thank you once again for watching. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.